Hey, Johnny Mosley here for Peter Glenn Ski and Sports, hanging out with my friend Travis here in the Dale booth at Winter Sports Market. This is where we uh, get to see all the new products, new technologies. It's where the, the guys who make it meet up with the people who sell it. And so you get an inside look at all the, all the hot stuff. And now, um, tell me first, because I can't walk around mispronouncing it. That's a word. Go ahead, say it for me. Well, I, do, I think it depends on where you're at, right? So I'm okay. from the Midwest, so we say Dale with like a nasally accent. But if you go okay. to, if you actually go to Norway, it's uh, it's Dala. Got it. Yeah. Got so it. Got it, it. Uh, actually represents the, uh, the the mountain nearby. So okay, the yeah. mountain nearby where where because yep. I the mean valley. the history of of Dali goes way back. 1879. 18. So that's pretty far back. That's pretty far back. Um, and actually, it's interesting because I was just overhearing a story that the whole mill and stuff is powered by has a, like a powered by a river yeah. by like a hydroelectric. It's yeah. got its own hydro. Yeah. So d you know, Dala was uh, green before green was cool. Right. You know? So. Yeah, they uh, they use hydropower to uh, run the whole facility and whatnot, and yeah. uh, obviously the wool is uh, is recyclable and all that stuff like that, so compostable and whatnot. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, no, it's, it's speaking of it going back, I, I was uh, uh, and it being cool before it was cool. Yeah, you know, yeah. before it was cool, I was at a, a New Year's party and and my buddy had just come up and he had bought a new jacket and it was a cool jacket. I was yeah. like, give him credit, I'm like, yeah, you, you did a good job. And there was a guy standing next to him in basically this sweater, and I was like. But that OG. That's iconic. It's <laughs> iconic. It doesn't yeah. get any more ski than, than yeah. what we're wearing right here. If you know what you're looking at, you know when someone's running the uh, the Dale of Norway sweater that they're 100 super drippy. That's All right. right. Uh, let's enough about the brand. Let's talk about the actual sweaters and what I'm wearing and yeah. what you're wearing. Yeah, so uh, what I've got on here is the 1994, uh, also known as the Lily Hammer. This was ah, uh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah so yeah. Uh, world champ sweater from uh, 1994. Been a little bit reimagined, right? So we took a, a classic wait, world sweater. champs? You mean the Olympics? Olympics, yes. Okay, yeah, okay, sorry. Yeah. yeah, different because the world championships happen in the every every other opposite yes, year, opposite correct. two year cycles. Yes, correct. Okay, so, so sorry for the correction. No, no, no thank that's you. That's the Olympic the Olympic, Olympic sweater, sweater okay. right? For the Norwegian team. Right? Yeah. So this is what they wore when they when they went to the games. Right. Um, but yeah, so what they've done is they've taken a classic sweater here with uh, the crests and whatnot and uh, kind of reimagined it, give it a different fit. And uh, they went to an air spun wool, which is a, just a new technique that makes it a little uh, fluffier and softer to the, to the feel. But mm -hmm. it's still 100% Norwegian wool. Because, I mean, let's just face it, everyone wants the look of a wool sweater, but a real wool sweater are, you know, without any soft pinnings, it's... <laughs> It's well, rugged. Yeah, well, it's rugged. And you and especially wear it. when we're talking about Dale and Norway, because Norwegian wool is completely different than merino wool or anything. Like that. It's just, mm -hmm. it's a scratchy nature. Sure. Right? Yeah. So that fiber is made to be, you know, withstand the the, the you know weather in Norway, which yeah. is so not great. Right? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, so that's uh, that, that's uh, the, the wool is just a, a thicker grade or a, a coarser grade, mm -hmm. and a lot of times we do have to blend it. So like with this, we have yeah. to blend it with merino to give it a little bit better touch, a little bit better knit. Sure. Uh, but uh, and, and kind of like what you have on too. So, yeah. Yeah. And I like you know that's I've I've never I've I've only owned this type with the zip. Yep. What do you call it with the crew neck? That's very regal looking yeah, sweater, right? This is just like an oversized crew, right? Yeah, yeah. So we got a, cool. an inch and a half, uh, 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 almost like a mock neck, but not, right? Yeah. You know, so. Uh, they, and but and it and that that fabric has a, softened a little bit. Like it doesn't. You don't feel like it's no getting no. you there. I, with the way they uh, the way they do that. Oh, okay. you know, oh, it's a different god. Yeah. They put a little they put a knurling little or whatever on the inside, that is. so it doesn't scratch in in the way that they. Uh, have the pleats there on the inside. It makes it very comfortable. That thing's strong. It's that thing's macho. I, I need to get into one of those. Um, and then this is more of your classic. Yeah. So uh, this is kind of a blend with heritage, right? Okay. So we have the veil that you're wearing. Mm -hmm. uh, the veil. Yeah, yeah. Norwegians love to put stories within their pieces, right? So we have uh, the little dots across the chest here, or across the shoulders, are actually uh, represent snowflakes. And then this portion right here would be considered like the top of the mountain, so snow falling onto the mountain. And then the iconic uh, uh, snow star there in the middle okay. kind of faded out. So, yeah, um, you know, very iconic piece. And then when we go to the Moritz, which is what we have behind, we just refine it a little bit more and then give it a little bit different knit. So we walk away from having this uh, strong Norwegian wool to more of a, a Norwegian merino blend, mm. uh, which gives it a little bit softer feel and also a little bit, uh, you know, daintier look to it. A little so, more user friendly layer. You can layer it yeah, a little bit yeah, more like a ski yeah. sweater. This. Uh, I, I would ski in this for sure. Mm -hmm. I'd probably wear like a long sleeve under it. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Or, I mean, or like a first, like a tight first layer. Yeah. Like a yeah. wicking layer, and then that would cover. Because other, if I like, I have short sleeves on here, and so like a day of skiing in that. Yeah. Might, I mean, you'd be you, surprised. They, yeah. with the the two pieces that we have on, they're extremely warm. Yeah. And uh, like you said, you don't need a whole lot underneath. Oh, I think so. warmth is fine. I think just the touch on your skin. I yeah. think you'd want to go first layer on this, and then. And then you can run a jacket or a shell over it. You're good. I mean, I actually yeah. see guys skiing in these things all the time. Yep. Like just this. Yep. Middle of winter. Yeah, I mean. You know, we Stein make... Erickson style, just a pair of glasses, <laughs> sweater. Yeah, the, hip, the hip's going out. I mean, yeah. if you want to, like, separate yourself, this is the way to go. Definitely. <laughs> all right, Dale, Dolly, Norway, you know, it doesn't matter the way you say it. it. sounds like I can say it any way I want. You can. All right, good, yep. because I don't want to stress out about that. Yep. All right, Johnny Mosley, Travis, thanks for uh, thanks for giving thanks, us dude. some information. Thanks for coming. Yeah, get your get your gear before you go. Have a great winter. PeterGlenn.com. Take care.